Welcome to Destination Marriage, a podcast about successfully navigating the winding roads of marriage. Whether you're newlyweds, engaged, looking to get married, or have been married for years, we want to share with you how we have navigated those winding roads over the past 19 years in our marriage. Join us on this journey as we talk about real life experiences in a marriage and what we have learned along the way. We discuss love, travel, fitness, raising kids, friendships, and much more, all from the perspective of our lives together. Happiness, love, grace, passion are some of the things we all strive for in a marriage, and we invite you to take this journey with us. Welcome, Welcome to, to Destination, Destination Marriage. marriage. Hi guys, welcome back to Destination Marriage. I'm your host, Jackie, and Tommy's taking a little bit of a hiatus this week, but guess what? I have an amazing guest for you. Her name is Megan Watley. She is an overcomer, a certified life coach. She has her master's and she's been a counselor over the last six years. She's also a beauty and has a heart for others that are in need of overcoming the obstacles of anxiety and a lack of direction in life. So without further ado, welcome my guest, Megan Watley. Welcome to Destination Marriage, Megan. Hey, thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing well. So I was so excited to record this today. And I, I want to let everyone know, like we met on social media and that's how we connected, which I love the fact that everyone's really able to connect via Instagram or different platforms on social media. And recently I had stayed in Miami at uh, the same hotel you stayed at. Yes, so cool. <laughs> I noticed, I was like, oh, I, I noticed your picture. I think you had had for Hotel Victor. And I was like, oh, wow, what a cool photo. And yeah. we connected. And then I noticed you were doing some really great things. And I wanted to connect with you further because I thought, wow, this could be a really good fit for the podcast. And I know a lot of our listeners could benefit from what you bring to the table and what's your true passion with helping others that are suffering from anxiety and also helping yeah. women find kind of their goal or their maybe their direction in life, I guess. Mm -hmm. how is that probably the best way to word it? Would you say? Yeah. Yeah. You nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> so you and I had connected, of course, the other day we were chatting about just kind of where this really stemmed from, but so our listeners know, can you share like at what point in your life did you know, or did anxiety start to kind of rear its ugly head? Well, you know, looking back, I feel like I struggled with anxiety as a young child. Um, I had so much anxiety as a child that I didn't even want to get in a car um, out of fear. I would get in a car wreck and die. Wow. So I just didn't realize that was anxiety. You know, I'd never heard of that. Um, and my mom is a really strong Christian. So she always pushed me to do things afraid. Um, mm -hmm. And the more that I stepped out in faith, the easier it got. And I think that's the part that most people get stuck at sometimes mm -hmm. is that they let their fears and their anxieties dictate their life. Yeah. And then as an adult, it crept back up um, due to a couple of different things. Um, I went through some traumatic things as a child and it showed back up a few years ago. So having to face those again as an adult um, caused some high anxiety. At the same time, I also got out of a very abusive relationship. And mm -hmm. so that resulted in severe anxiety and panic attacks. Um, and then lastly, being a couple of years ago when I was 28, um, I felt really behind in life, like maybe I wasn't good enough or just really behind because all my friends were having kids and they were married. So that also caused mm -hmm. um, some anxiety. So when you say that, it sounds like there's maybe like a little bit of a pause between your childhood and then it may be revisiting mm -hmm. in your young adult years. Yes. So was it really the, do you think it was probably the abusive relationship or was it more so the pressures of where you thought you should be in life that maybe turn that light switch on? I think it was just the perfect storm. <laughs> um, Cause it all, I know like the abusive relationship ending and then things with my childhood that had resurfaced just mixed together at the same time. And there you have it. Severe anxiety. Wow. <laughs> panic attacks. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that sounds like a really just a bad combination. And yes. it, even if you're not a sufferer of anxiety, just, I mean, it just sounds like one thing after another that was probably just attacking you 
emotionally yeah. or even mentally. Yeah. So when, when did you realize the emotions you were experiencing were actually anxiety related? You know, it's funny because I didn't know what anxiety or panic attacks were until I was in grad school. So I was working on my master's degree mm -hmm. in counseling and I took a DSM class, which is the diagnostic manual. And the professor had said, you know, during this class, you're going to want to diagnose everybody. You're going to think you have all the disorders. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> um, but as I'm reading through the DSM yeah. and working through the semester, I thought, oh my goodness, I have all these characteristics of anxiety and even with panic attacks too. So um, up until then, I thought maybe this is just normal or maybe I have um, some kind of medical condition because I would get dizzy and my heart would race. So the doctors thought maybe I was hypoglycemic, different things like that. But turns out it was just um, panic and anxiety. So what would you say, like if you say, you say panic attacks or anxiety, mm -hmm. what, what would you say? What's the difference, I guess? How do you decipher between panic attacks and just everyday anxiety? Sure. So with anxiety, um, it's just an excessive amount of worry, anxious thoughts that can be in any area of your life, such as like job responsibilities, your health finances, or some kind of minor concerns. Yeah. Um, but it's overwhelming. You know, it's the racing thoughts. Mm -hmm. And then with panic, it's an extreme anxious response where a person experiences a panic attack. And that's when you have a bunch of bodily symptoms that go on. So mm -hmm. your heart can race, get shaky, nauseous. Um, and it's kind of when that fight or flight kicks in and, okay. and you gotta, right. gotta go. <laughs> You're like, I need to exit stage a lot. Yeah, I, I can't take this. This is overwhelming. So there would be many times I would go into Walmart, especially, and I would start feeling very anxious. And then a panic attack would happen and I'd have to leave the buggy, go out to the car, or if I was at a concert, mm -hmm. um, anything like, sometimes I just couldn't handle it. I'd be so anxious and I'd have to leave. So it really stole from my life for a period of time. It sounds like, it. I mean, you know, I, you know, just, if I'm being completely frank, like I, I haven't had a panic attack in a while, but I think I've had that before, but more so anxiety. I've, I've had anxiety kind of throughout my life, just since my childhood. But do you think it maybe in, in terms of an emotional response, maybe it rears its ugly head differently in one person versus the other? Um, I would say yes and no, <laughs> um, because <laughs> people with anxiety, they have the constant fear, worry, nervousness, dread. Um, and for some people that could also lead to feeling depressed, getting angry, mm -hmm. becoming irritable, um, restless. And then when we think about the physical symptoms that anxiety causes, people can experience different ones. Mm -hmm. So the emotional part, Yes, but then the physical part of the anxiety, it's different. It okay. can be different for, for each person. Yeah. So how often, if you don't mind my asking, like how often yeah. are you feeling anxious on every, any, like in, in, in any given week, like how often, like Monday through Friday? Oh, I would say every single day back then. Oh, wow. Yeah. Every single day I was having a panic attack mm -hmm. at least once a day, if not more. So were there specific triggers that would maybe turn the anxiety on for you that you knew I need to remove, my, remove myself from X, Y, and Z, or were you unaware? Um, at the time I was unaware. So with panic, it seems like it just comes out of nowhere, mm -hmm. but in reality it doesn't. Um, and through working or going through my healing journey is when I realized the root and the triggers so that I could Mm -hmm. overcome. But, but back then I couldn't pinpoint it like I can now. So, what do you say are kind of some of the most common symptoms of anxiety? Um, let's see when I think of the common symptoms of anxiety, mm -hmm. I categorize them in three different ways. So I think of the bodily symptoms, behavioral, and then the cognitive. Yeah. So when it comes to the most common bodily symptom, I would say um, that would be heart palpitations, headaches, and nausea. 
that's what I saw a lot with my clients. Mm -hmm. And then the most common cognitive ones are the worry, um, the racing thoughts, overthinking. Mm -hmm. um, And then the most common behavioral, in my opinion, would be withdrawing from people or Mm -hmm. changing your behavior to avoid certain places, people or things. Kind of like removing yourself, I guess, maybe anti being antisocial, would you say? Mm -hmm. Antisocial or um, if you're start getting like, let's say you're anxious at some kind of social event. So then you would, you would leave, you would withdraw, or that could be even not even going to a social function. Okay. I could see that how, how that would be. And I I feel like I've, I've kind of come across a lot of people that have, or they, they say that they feel like some type of social anxiety, whether it's work related, when they go to like a large event for like a conference or Mm -hmm. a party where they maybe know one or two people, but walking into a party is just really overwhelming. And I actually, I get that because I've never, people don't really, I feel like when I say this, a lot of people don't believe me, but I'm very shy. So if I were to walk (laughs) party, I'm not the person who's like, Oh, hi, I'm Jackie. You know, like, would you walk into a party and say, hi, I'm Megan. Who are you? No, (laughs) No. I'm an introvert at heart. So no, well, we're the same. So maybe that's why we connected. I don't know. Yeah. (laughs) So when would you, having experienced what you've experienced over the years and, and it's, I love the fact that you've overcome it. Like you've obviously been able to kind of target really what those triggers are for you and where you are and heal from that. But if you were meeting someone new that was suffering from this, or even if you had heard of someone else, like just through a friend, what would you tell them in terms of like, when should they seek help? I think someone should seek help for their anxiety if it's interfering with their day-to-day life. So are they constantly worrying? Are they feeling overwhelmed? Are they having panic attacks? Um, If it's affecting their day-to-day life, I think that's when Mm -hmm. they should seek help for sure. Okay. And in in terms of the types of help, would this be um, maybe going to see a a therapist, their pastor? What type of help would you recommend as a first step? Um, I definitely think a therapist, um, someone that's in the, that field. So it could be a licensed social worker. They're yeah. trained as well. Um, but definitely a therapist or a social worker, someone that specializes in it. Okay. Mm-hmm. So here, here's another question I had. I was thinking about this, like, you know what, if, if I'm like really to the point where with, with panic and anxiety and it's paralyzing me, the very mm-hmm. thought of maybe reaching out to someone might actually amp up my anxiety. So how do I overcome that obstacle so I can reach out for help? You know, what would you tell that person if they're riddled with fear and anxiety that they feel like I can't even pick up the phone or just to go see someone, which just would put me in an absolute panic. I think that the person has to remind themselves that the person on the other side of the phone has had the same conversation with another person. You know, like, so if we're struggling and we feel anxious to call or ashamed that we're struggling, we have to remind ourselves that the therapist works with people like us every single day. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not going to be judged. It's not anything to be shameful about. And just to make the first step, (laughs) just make the call. Mm -hmm. Um, If it's sending an email, um, one thing I did whenever I was seeking a therapist was search, I searched areas or, um, agencies Mm -hmm. around me. And then I would click on their website, go to um, the different therapist that they had and see which one I felt like I would connect with. Cause they'll have like an about me section that you could read. Mm -hmm. And so I would read about them. And then if I felt like they would be a good fit for me, um, I would give them a call. Okay. Now, earlier you had mentioned something and I, I want to touch on it. Cause I actually think that it's something that people are experiencing right now, maybe more so than ever. Cause mm-hmm. you and I, well, I'm a little bit older than you. So <laughs> <laughs> I feel like social media has put other pressures on young people to be at a certain stage in their life, whether it's married, have kids, you know, have a certain type of career, be in a certain stage in their life financially. Mm-hmm. That's different than what I experienced. We just didn't have those added pressures. So in that sense, like what, 
do you think now, now that people are experiencing that, especially young people, do you think that anxiety has increased significantly over the years now that we have a visual comparison of where we think we should be? Yes, 100%. Um, even working as a therapist in 2020, mm -hmm. um, so many people came to therapy for the first time in their life due to anxiety. Um, and before that, I worked at a psychiatric hospital and people were suicidal. They were coming in all the time because of the unknown, you know, due to COVID and things shutting down. So it definitely, I think, has increased. Wow. What would you tell someone right now that maybe is in their twenties? Um, and I, we have a, a, a son that's in his twenties as well. And all of his friends, you know, they're still kind of finding their way. Um, mm -hmm. What would you tell a young person right now that's in their twenties that maybe is experiencing that, that, that fear and anxiety of I'm not where I should be when they're looking at Snapchat or Instagram or what have you? Yeah, yeah that's a good question. Um, we have to remember that social media is a highlight reel. You know, so many things go or so many factors play into the day and people are posting that one second of their day. Yeah. So everything could look just like rainbows and butterflies on their Instagram, but that's their highlight reel. Mm -hmm. And we have to keep that in mind, um, especially when it comes to comparing. And one thing um, that I talk about at my retreat is it's okay to unfollow people. You know, it's not that you don't like them, but we have to protect yeah. our mind. Absolutely. So if I'm scrolling on social media and there's a post, say it's a news outlet or a person, and every time I see their, their content, mm -hmm. it just makes me feel, say, jealous or angry, envious, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. If it raises up a negative emotion, unfollow them. You yeah. know, you don't even have to unfriend them, but right. just unfollow so that you don't put yourself in that situation yeah. to feel that way. I agree with that. And you know, what's weird. Um, not weird, but it's, it's actually <laughs> timely. I should say, I actually had someone else tell me that recently that they do the very same thing. They said, you know, I've had to recently unfollow or maybe meet some accounts that just were making me feel a certain way, nothing negative mm -hmm. towards that person, that individual. It's just what they were posting or where they are in life right now because of where I am or what I'm experiencing personally, was just maybe kind of bringing things to the surface or making me feel a certain way that I just don't want to feel. So I mm -hmm. absolutely agree with you. I think that, you know, it's kind of, a if you're doing a little bit of a mental health check on yourself, you know, yes. <laughs> but, you know, I also think sometimes when, you know, you're 21, 22, you don't, they don't necessarily maybe think that way, you know, and they just automatically put that pressure on themselves thinking I should be here X, Y, and Z in terms of, I should be traveling the world and have, you know, already find my match and all yeah. of these added pressures. And I, you know, Tommy and I were talking about it. It's just, it, it's completely different. We didn't have that visual comparison. So if you weren't mm. immediately in our world, we didn't know about it. And there was no thought after, you know, in terms of like, we had our friends, we had our circle, we knew it was in front of us immediately, but outside of that, there was no thinking, well, this 21 year old is flying off to Paris and, you know, they've already mm -hmm. met the love of their life. And this person, yeah. you know, is, is flying them all over. You know what I mean? There was no comparison that way. Now I feel like young people have this challenge and I've seen so many things now that it's, it's absolutely a real thing. So I'm trying to really be mindful of it because we do have Mm -hmm. young children. So I'm, you know, wanting to make sure I keep my ear to the floor on that. So thank you yeah. for your question. <laughs> You're welcome. I just think it, we have to be aware of that and notice when our mood changes mm -hmm. when we're on social media. Yeah. Um, I will never forget this conversation I had with someone. Um, we were looking at someone's Instagram or maybe he was showing me someone's Instagram and all she was posting was traveling photos and so it appeared when you looked at her Instagram that she was going to like New York and California and, you know, to the yeah. beach, like every post was vacation, vacation. That's well, amazing. he was like, you know, that's funny because she's at home. And I was like, but she's putting that on her story, you know, or on her feed. And so what she would do is take all these photos while she was on vacation and then post them over the course of say a month or two right. months. So yeah. it, it appeared that she was traveling way more 
And she actually was. She was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, full disclosure, I have shared travel, like just random pics slowly throughout. Yeah. But I see what you're saying. Like I I have recognized that on Instagram. It absolutely is a highlight reel. Actually, Mm -hmm. Tommy, Tommy said something funny. This is a while ago. He used to call Facebook fake book. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) because you're right a lot. Who's Mm -hmm. really going to, and I think I had to put a post a a few weeks ago, maybe a couple months ago about, you know, this is a beautiful post of like, I think I had maybe something decorated in my house, but there's also like a dirty mess in my kitchen. I mean, the reality is you're, you know, juggling a million different things where you, whether you're married, have kids, don't have kids, like life gets busy. Mm -hmm. Not everything can be picture perfect. And no one unless you're like, you know, woke up with a silver spoon in your mouth, travel mm-hmm. the world like that yeah. <laughs> and you have a photographer on hand, but it, it, but as a, that's the thing, like as a young person, you're not thinking through that process. It's an immediate comparison. Right. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I, and I mean, I could see, I probably would have done the same had that been, you know, in my life at that age, but we didn't have Instagram then. So <laughs> I'm so glad that there was not social media when I was in school. <laughs> I'm so glad. It would have made life much more difficult, right? Oh, yeah. We Way were- more. Oh, my goodness. So obviously, when we had connected, um, I had noticed that you were or you had created these wonderful retreats for women that suffer from anxiety and, um, forgive me, I am sure there's probably men that can benefit from this as well. So, um, but I noticed on your Instagram, the retreats for anxiety. And then also I noticed that you had retreats for the vision boards. So I was looking through, I was like, oh my gosh, this is fantastic. I love the fact that you were doing something to help other people that are suffering from anxiety. So, I want to do a little bit of a deeper dive in that so our listeners can learn about your retreats and also take advantage of all the wealth of knowledge that you're bringing to the table. (laughs) So so can you tell us a little bit about like, how does the retreat assist in the healing of anxiety? Sure. So I created the overcoming anxiety curriculum while the Lord walked me through my own healing journey with anxiety. So I was very involved in ministry and things like that a couple of years ago. And the Lord called me to take a solid year to myself. So he wanted me to step down from everything that I was doing and really work on myself because this was, I was so anxious and I would, you know, counsel people all day long, but I wasn't taking care of myself. So over the course of a year, I was reading all the, all kinds of books on anxiety, trying to learn more. Mm -hmm. Um, and as I would be praying and the Lord would show me something, or I would read something that would stand out to me, I would get my laptop, start typing because I didn't want to forget Mm -hmm. what the Lord was teaching me. Mm -hmm. Well, after a year goes by, I'm walking in freedom. I've learned so much about myself and how to overcome. And I thought I need to teach this to people. Mm -hmm. Um, I need to, I need to turn this into a workshop is what I originally thought. And um, I went through all the pages that I'd made on my laptop and just categorized things. And turns out I had everything that I needed to um, launch a workshop. Okay. So my parents, they own some Creekside property in mm-hmm. Alabama. And at the time when I was going through this, they had just bought the property. Mm-hmm. So I didn't have the vision to have the retreat there at the time. But once they got moved in, Then I had the vision where, you know, people can escape, they can retreat away and it's just for four hours. Mm -hmm. Um, And I teach the curriculum that the Lord downloaded into my spirit. Um, And I tell them it's not a magic pill, you know, but I do give applicable steps that they can take um, when they're faced with anxiety and, and learn how to overcome. So included in the retreat though are, two teaching sessions by me. Okay. Everyone gets their own quiet time by the Creek. I've created a Creek side experience sheet that they can journal and go through, or they can just pray mm-hmm. sit there and relax. However they want to spend their time. Um, but so, the, okay. So they get that quiet time. Then they get a folder with notes, um, a journal. And then last but not least mm-hmm. Chick-fil-A meal. <laughs> Who doesn't love some good Chick-fil-A? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> I 
Chick-fil-A <laughs> full on got us through the pandemic because we're, yes. we don't have a ton of restaurants that would do um, like the home delivery. I don't know, like uh, with Uber oh, DoorDash. Mm-hmm. or DoorDash. Yeah. We didn't really have that option. So Chick-fil-A. Oh my gosh. We, I find it because I was cooking nonstop. You have a house full of boys. You're constantly cooking. Oh, I can't imagine. Took me a few, few minutes down the road. I was like, oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Sorry yes. to you off. <laughs> no, no. Chick-fil-A is great. <laughs> so they get the Chick-fil-A um, lunch box as well. Mm-hmm. And, and, and you're talking about the whole experience that they have. So would you say, would you consider the retreat an initial first step for most anxiety sufferers, but is this like a good first step? Yes, most definitely. Um, cause I break the retreat down in different parts. So it, first I go over education, um, which is so important because we have to know what it is that we're trying to overcome. Yeah. So first we have to get educated on anxiety. Then we're going to explore the different triggers and what those could look like. Um, and then ultimately how to overcome, but it's important not just to get to the trigger and pinpoint the trigger, Mm -hmm. but keep asking questions to get to the root. Cause that's when we can truly overcome is when we know what the root is. So when, when, when the, when you're visiting the retreat and you're kind of working through to find the route, are we sharing this as a group or is this a one-on-one with you? So some people get confused because the retreat is not group therapy. Okay. Um, think of it more like a workshop where you have a teacher. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm, I'm teaching and I do ask some discussion questions, but mm-hmm. people don't come like to share everything that they're going through. Okay. Um, it's more That's educational kind of visualizing it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I need to be more clear, um, in my marketing because it's not group therapy. People have told me, well, I really want to come, but I'm not ready for therapy, you know, group yeah. therapy. I'm like, no, 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 it's not group therapy. Um, so just think of it like a workshop, but afterwards people do come up to me, ask me questions and I'm happy to, to process things. Okay. That's what I was trying to understand. Cause I was thinking, I'm like, gosh, if I'm already like riddled with anxiety, <laughs> hearing this as a group would probably yeah. like send me into a tailspin. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But I was unsure of, okay, wonderful. Well, yeah. what can someone expect to kind of get out of the retreat? So if I've you know visited the retreat, I've gone through the workshop, what should my realistic expectations be immediately following? They will have everything they need Mm -hmm. to overcome anxiety and walk in freedom. I truly believe that. Mm -hmm. So it's just, what will they do with that information? (laughs) Will they go home and practice it Mm -hmm. and walk out their freedom or, you know, put the folder away, put the notes away and Mm -hmm. never look at it again. That's a good point. Cause I, I, you know, I've noticed that with, um, not only myself, but just like a lot of people that I know, we've read like really good, great books. Like you can read mm-hmm. a ton of really good books, but if you don't apply the information, right, what good is it going to do? Mm-hmm. So if it sounds like you're really giving them a lot of pearls of wisdom that they can apply, maybe some applicable steps to kind of work mm-hmm. out of that phase of anxiety. Um, I don't want to give away all of your, your <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nuggets. Of what you offer, yeah, your nuggets. Um, <laughs> but it sounds like you're giving them, giving them a lot of tools to walk away with. Yeah. So how they apply it to their daily life is, is, is really up to them at that point. Right. And it's more than just coping. Mm-hmm. Um, I know we hear coping skills all day long. Like, well, have you practiced your coping skills? Yeah. Um, I honestly hate <laughs> that word coping skill. I like to think of it more like relaxation skills. Yeah. Um, but there's still another step to overcome. So we can use the relaxation skills. Those are great. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, how do we overcome it? How do we not have to always go to relaxation skill? Right. And that's what I teach. Excellent. Well, I, I mean, it sounds, it definitely sounds like a retreat that if anyone's going through this, they should absolutely check out. Um, the other thing that I was really excited about, I want to chat about is your vision board retreat. That's yeah. so much fun. And I love a good vision board. Let me just say, so Awesome. So a couple of years ago, I want to say 
maybe not last summer, obviously in the last summer, because it was a pandemic, couldn't do <laughs> life. But the summer before that, uh, my best friend and I went and did like a quick little getaway and we made vision boards together. Oh, how fun. <laughs> so when I saw that, I was like, oh, I love the awesome. vision board. So I wanted to know like what for you and, and with your retreat, what is the purpose behind the vision board? So the purpose behind the vision board is for one, to give people a chance to retreat away from the busyness of life, to relax, get rejuvenated and explore their dreams so that they will leave with clarity Mm -hmm. and ultimately just excitement about life. Because I think as Christians, sometimes we just can settle, you know, but I really challenge people at this retreat, like to dream bigger and get excited about life. Like we truly can enjoy everyday life. So what ignited the passion in you to start a retreat specific to vision boards? So I've always been one to dream big. Like even as a child, um, I can remember thinking, oh, one day I want to give a car away and I want to have this and I want to have that, like really big dreams for a kid. Um, And I actually didn't know what the concept of a vision board was until maybe a year or so ago when a coworker she suggested that I do a vision board retreat. And I was like, what is that? (laughs) Because she had went to one and she was like, I know you do the anxiety. And she said, I think you would do great at a vision board retreat. So Uh I was like, sure, it sounds fun. Can you you (laughs) tell me what that is? So then I began researching it and I thought this really fits who I am. You know, I've always been a big dreamer. So I started researching it and I created my own retreat curriculum. That's amazing. So let's say, let's say I'm coming to the retreat for the vision board. And I said, you know what, Megan, I'm excited about this. I want to create a vision board, but I, I have no vision. Where do I start? Yeah, that's a great question. And it's (laughs) actually a common question that I get. Um, People will reach out to me on social media say, Hey, I really want to come. This looks fun, but I don't even have anything that I would put on my board. I'm like, yes, you do. (laughs) You just don't know it but you will leave with so much clarity. Um, So if they don't know where to start, one thing um, I think someone needs to consider are the different dynamics in life. So we have finances, education, health and fitness, spirituality, um, self-care, family and relationships, and career. So when we think about all those things, we have to ask ourselves, do we want any of those areas to change? And if so, which ones and how? Um, Next, I would ask the person or at the retreat, we go through this Mm -hmm. um, and explore what would we do if there was nothing standing in our way? Or let's say we we won the lottery. Mm -hmm. Uh, What project would we be working on? Um, And think about what energizes you. Think about your values. Mm -hmm. Um, So a lot of times when people work through this Creekside experience sheet that I give them, they walk away with so much clarity um, because we can break that down with, you know, the family or finances, um, all those things can be broken down into so many more Mm -hmm. um, things. And then if they're confused about their purpose, because it's one thing what we put on a vision board, Mm -hmm. you know, Um, but then if they're confused about their purpose, James one, five says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who generously gives to all without reproach and it will be given to him. So I say it this way to them. If we want to know why we were created, we need to ask the creator because it's, it's not that hard. I think sometimes people think I have to keep searching for my purpose, but Think about our, your gifts and your strengths because God's given each of each and every one of us different gifts and strengths and your purpose for your life usually involves something that you're already good at yeah. and that you're already passionate about. So to touch on that real quick, like, cause you know, yeah. obviously like we're believers as well. And, and as a Christian, like Tommy and I both individually and together as husband and wife had had prayer time to really figure out like or really wanted to like hear God's voice, like what is our purpose and where should we be? And we've been married for a long time, but you know, sometimes things change in life, you know, that give Mm -hmm. you a moment of pause 
yeah. am I where I am supposed to be, you know? So if someone were to just in, in chatting with you and they come to you for a vision board and they say, look, I've been, you know, really seeking after the Lord and really trying to find out what is my purpose. Mm-hmm. And I still don't know. And they feel lost. Is that something that you, a lot of people experience or you've ex- experienced where you feel like I'm not really hearing anything, you know, what do yeah. I do? With that? Yeah. Um, one reason I love the way we've set up the retreat is because they get that quiet time yeah. and to reflect and just be still. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's so hard sometimes to be still and listen. Yeah. We can pray, pray, pray all day long. Um, you know, Oh, I need this or I wish Lord show me this or not. But how often do we sit and wait? Mm -hmm. Do we wait for him to respond? You know, the Lord can speak in different ways. Sometimes it's, you know, internally, we know he's speaking to us or through scripture, through a friend, all kinds of ways. And I think that they can find that when they're still Mm -hmm. really think about what am I passionate about? What am I good at? I used to be so scared that the Lord would call me to move out of the country and be a missionary. Like I was so <laughs> scared to ask the Lord what my purpose was yeah. because I thought he would call me to do something that I hated. Yeah. When in reality, the Lord has already given me strengths and gifts and desires for mm-hmm. a reason. And your purpose is usually mm-hmm. in all of that. I love that. And I I think, you know, a lot of people probably struggle with trying to find their purpose, especially maybe, and it could be really, I'm sure at any stage in life. Um, like I said, when things have changed in our lives, we've maybe taken a step back just to make sure like, are we, are we, where are, where are we, where we're supposed to be, you know, cause you do, you should do a gut check to make sure like, am I really kind of following my purpose where God wants me to be? Am I planted where he wants me to be? Because I can't be impactful if I've removed myself from the place that he wants me to be. So Mm -hmm. kind of, and that's a really good point. Cause I I think a lot of people, and especially if you like to be in control, you automatically want to act instead of being quiet. I mean, that's, it sounds easier than, than it really is to really be quiet and listen. Yes. Sure. Is that something that it, most of the people say, you know, when they come to retreat, like it, that's probably, is that a bigger challenge for them to just kind of be in that quiet? Yeah. Um, because we're such a busy society. It's almost like a, a badge of honor that we wear, you know, mm-hmm. we want, we want to be busy. We want everyone to know how mm-hmm. busy we are. You know, we're proud of it, but what if it was flipped and the badge of honor was rest, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> How have you been doing? Oh, I've just been resting. You know, it's been great. People will probably be like, you know, that's considered lazy. Some people would think that's, well, they're, they're, they're being lazy. Right. But rest is so needed. Stillness mm-hmm. is so needed. Um, but yeah, people walk away and they would come saying, I don't have anything to put on my board. Mm-hmm. And then by the end of the day, they are so excited and have so many ideas. And they're like, you know, I just started journaling because I give them a journal. So as they start journaling, things just start coming to life. Mm -hmm. Now, would you, do you think, I mean, or would you say that the anxiety and maybe the feeling of a lack of purpose or lack of goals or direction are directly connected? Is there a correlation? Yes. I think 100%. um, You know, if we think about scripture, Mm-hmm. Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. So when I think about perish or the definition, yeah. it means to suffer or to lose one's life. So where there is no vision, mm-hmm. I suffer or I lose my life. So what does that actually look like? Mm-hmm. If we don't have a clear vision, we don't know our purpose mm-hmm. and we're suffering and we suffer because we don't because that usually includes us being confused, mm-hmm. having anxiety because we don't know our purpose. Yeah. There's can be some turmoil, even bitterness because we're comparing our life to someone else's. Mm-hmm. We could have sadness and those are just to name a few. So I do think there is a direct connection with anxiety and, mm-hmm. and your purpose. 
Wow. I love that verse, by the way. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, it's really good. It's strong. And actually, I was listening to someone on a podcast. I want to say it's probably 2019. I was at the gym. That's when I like to listen to my podcasts. <laughs> yeah, it's a great place. <laughs> Maximize my time, right? And, <laughs> and he was talking about that very same verse and the importance behind it. So I love you hit the nail on the head. I really, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love that verse. <laughs> so if I am interested in coming to either the anxiety retreat, or I want to come to the retreat and sit down and create a really great vision board. Yeah. How do I do that? Well, um, you can find me on Instagram. My Instagram name is Meg underscore Watley. And then I also have a Facebook page called a moment with Megan. And so I usually post, um, on both places with updates. Nice. Um, and then I also have a website and that is meganwatley.com and it will have, um, or it has the retreat info for each one and you can RSVP. So if you're interested in one, um, all you have to do is click RSVP, give me your name and then an email address, and then I can reach back out to you and we can connect. That's amazing. And so is there a cost associated with a retreat? There is a cost. Okay. And what can the listeners, if they want to budget for a retreat, like, can you give us a range of what that looks like for them? Sure. Yeah. So right now it's four hours and it's usually 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Okay. Um, and right now it's just $97. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. That's, that's a fantastic deal. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and these yeah. are, like, these are huge things that better going, you're going to benefit from for the rest of your life, overcoming anxiety and, and really finding your purpose. I mean, and it sounds like, it sounds like when we had chatted before that there's a little bit of a community that you have now, as a result of the retreats, you have a Facebook, yes. Group, right? Yes. I totally forgot to mention that. So, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a private Facebook group. So everyone that's attended any retreat, um, they're automatically put in the private Facebook group so that we can still stay connected. Okay. Um, and so that everyone who attends can stay connected mm -hmm. with the others. So it's a good place for me and a good place for them because when we do the vision board specifically, mm -hmm. people get really, um, emotional and then supportive for other people. Yeah. And they're like, oh, I want to know what they're doing, you know, in a couple months or how are you working on this? And so Facebook gives us a great way to stay connected. So one other question I wanted to ask you, because I think we had chatted about, is this strictly for women or can couples come? Like, what is this? Is it just for women or are men invited to the retreats as well? So it's always been just for women, but okay. last year, um, cause this is my third year doing these. Um, last year I had a couple of men reach out to me and I thought, I don't know about this. Cause it's always been for women. Yeah. But what I did was I hosted a co-ed retreat. Um, so I did have some men come last year, mm -hmm. but at every retreat isn't always co-ed, but okay. if I know of men that are interested, I will, um, promote a co-ed retreat. Mm -hmm. And another thing too, I forgot to mention if someone doesn't live you know, within driving distance, or they don't want to travel to Alabama since it's just for four hours. Yeah. Um, I do offer this online as mm -hmm. well. So it can be a one-on-one -on -one workshop too. Okay. Do you think this would be something that let's say a husband and wife, if they're feeling really anxious about something in their marriage, a huge step in life, whatever they're experiencing at the time, because obviously that can just run the gamut. Um, mm -hmm. and the, would you encourage them to maybe do the workshop together? Yeah, I think that would be amazing. I had a couple come last year who was a couple and they loved it. And they actually had their quiet time together and they processed through things and prayed together. And so it was really cool to see that. That's awesome. Yeah. I was thinking about, I'm like, you know, this could be really good for husbands and wives. Yeah. You know, last year, I think kind of, if, if you were not suffering from anxiety, you know, prior to 2019, or I'm sorry, 2020, mm -hmm. <laughs> 2020 may have triggered some feelings of anxiousness just because we weren't expecting everything that had happened, happen. And there were so many unknowns. And so I know a lot of people that experienced job loss or a dip in their income. And so if this affected a household, this could be really great for a husband and wife that maybe they need to regroup 
and mm-hmm. kind of refocus, um, especially, you know, this sounds like a really great opportunity for them to maybe shut out the outside noise. Mm-hmm. It sounds like the Creek side experience is just something yes. that is out of this world. So <laughs> it's amazing. Yes. I have photos online. They need to check them out. <laughs> it sounds absolutely lovely. I actually saw some of the things he had posted, but I need to look at some more of the photos because yeah. I'm envisioning just like, like a spa like feel to it. I mm-hmm. <laughs> It's where my mind yeah. goes about relaxation, but that's what you need. I think to kind of tune out, you know, just whether it's just the phone, the computer, everything else to really focus, especially if you are trying to be quiet and really listen to what God has for you and whether yeah. it's purpose or, you know, kind of shutting out that anxiety. So, and self-care, um, a lot yeah. of people don't, don't take self-care. So they don't even get that 45 minutes or 60 minutes ever by right. yourself. Do you think that, um, you know, I guess maybe over the years that there's been a little bit of a, a stigma kind of around anxiety? I would think so. Yeah. Um, but I, like you said, it's grown since last year. So more and more people I feel like are open to therapy and talking about it. Yeah. It sounds like with, with having that community and having that added support, people feel like they're not alone. So mm-hmm. that's huge. Um, so yeah. for listeners, if anyone is, is suffering from anxiety or really is excited about a vision board retreat, I would encourage you to reach out to Megan because this yeah. is amazing. And um, like I said, I love a good vision board. So <laughs> yes, I have mine right here, actually. Okay. <laughs> so one last question though, with the vision board, I did want to know, let's say I were to come to your retreat, we create a vision board. I'm a part of your community. Um, I'm, I wouldn't say it's accountability, but I guess, does everyone kind of check in to see, um, you know, where are you with accomplishing those goals or. So this Facebook group is very new. And when I say new within like a month or so, yeah. um, someone who came to the vision board retreat gave me the idea. Cause they're like, I want to stay connected. I want to see what everyone's doing and how they're working on it. So I thought that is a fantastic idea. Um, so I do check in, even though it's new, but yeah. you know, what are your goals this week? Um, pop them in the comments and I'll check in with you, you know, sometime this week to see how things are going. Mm-hmm. And then we break it down to, even in the comments with, if someone said, I want to clean my house, you know, I'll, I'll write back in the comments. Okay. Let's be a little bit more specific. Yeah. What does that look like? So then they'll say, I want to dust every room in the house and I want to clean, you know, the garage out, something like that. Perfect. That's specific. Yeah. And then at the end of the week, I checked back, things like that. But I want to create like a next level to the anxiety and the vision board retreat. Um, and once I have some extra time, I'll sit down and create that because I would love for people to bring their vision board back mm-hmm. to the, the other retreat. And then we can really dig deeper. Yeah. I love that idea. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming on to the podcast and sharing your passion and the wonderful things that you're doing right now. I think it's amazing that you're able to take something that you've grown from and help others overcome, you know, those, those challenges with anxiety and then also finding their purpose. So thank you so much. Well, thank you so much for having me. This has been so fun (laughs) and what an honor. Yeah. And now we're friends. So yeah, we're friends. (laughs) Need a new friend. And I'd love to have you again as you grow the retreat. Um, And I definitely am going to share everything here so our listeners can reach out to you and and you can provide them with all of your wealth of information so they can overcome any of these obstacles in their life. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Megan. (laughs) Have a good night. You too. Bye. Bye. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and if so, please continue to listen and subscribe on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts from. We would greatly appreciate positive reviews, and we will answer any questions at feedback at destinationmarriagepodcast.com. For up-to-date content and news about the podcast, you can follow us on Instagram at destination underscore marriage and visit our website at destinationmarriagepodcast.com. Be sure to tune in next week.